Hello, welcome to Premium Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 75 of ASP.NET video series. In part 73 of this video series, we have discussed about logging exceptions to the Windows Event Viewer. In this session, we'll discuss about logging exceptions to a database table. In fact, first we'll look at the example that we used in part 73 that logs exceptions to the Windows Event Viewer. We will then rewrite that example to actually log the exceptions to a database table. Let's flip to Visual Studio. I have webform1.aspx and on this webform we have a grid view control here. When the webform1 loads up within the page load event, we are creating an instance of the data set object and then we are invoking the read XML method which will read countries.xml file and then load the data into the data set. The data set is then set as the data source for the grid view control and we are calling data bind method finally. But then in this project, we don't have countries.xml file. So obviously when we run this, we get a file not found exception. And we are not handling this exception within the page load event procedure. So it gets propagated till the web form level, that's the page level. And at the page level, we don't have page underscore error event handler. So it's going to get further propagated till the application level. And at the application level within global.asax file, we have application underscore error event handler, which gets invoked. And here within this application underscore error event procedure, we are getting a reference to the last exception that has occurred using server.getLastError method. And if you look at the return type of this method, it is returning an exception object back. And we are storing that in this exception reference variable. And we are checking, okay, if the exception is not null, meaning if the exact exception has occurred, then pass that exception object to this log method this log method is going to log that to the event viewer. That's what we have discussed about in part 73. Once the exception is logged, we clear the error and then we will redirect the user to errors.aspx page. And if you look at errors.aspx page, it's a standard ASPX page uh, which ge with just some HTML there, which lets the user know that there is an application error. Okay, so now let's look at the log method that we have written in part 73 of this video series. So let me click on go to definition. So this is the log logger class and if you look at this class it's present in logger.cs file. That's the class file we added. And then within that class we have the static method log which takes in the exception object. So the exception object is coming from global.asax. Okay, so what is the log method going to do with that exception object? Now, an exception can have inner exceptions as well. And we discussed about inner exceptions uh, in, in the previous sessions of this video series. So when we have an inner exception, we want to be able to retrieve that as well. That's why we are using a while loop, do while loop here. So what happens when the exception object comes in? We are creating an, an instance of string builder object. And then we are retrieving the exception type exception message and the stack trace okay and then we are appending new line characters at appropriate places so that the message is properly formatted all right now once we have the exception message appended till the stack trace then what are we doing we are retrieving the inner exception out of that exception object and assigning that to the exception object itself and then we are checking okay is there an inner exception because since we are assigning the inner exception to this exception object, when we say, okay, is, ex is exception not equal to null, we are actually checking if there is an inner exception. Yes, if it's not null, then what happens? It further enters this loop again and then retrieves the message, uh, stack trace, etc., and then appends that to the string builder object. Okay, now if there is no inner exception, then it exits of this loop, out of this loop, and then what are we doing here? This is the piece of code that actually logs that message to the event viewer. Okay, so the first line checks, okay, do we have the source, presumetech.com? If yes, then create an instance of the event log class and then set the source and finally invoke the write entry method. And to this method, we are passing the string builder object and we are converting that to string. And then we are specifying we want to log that entry in the event viewer as an error. So this is what we have seen in part 73 of this video series. But in this session, we're going to discuss about how to log this exception to a database table instead of this event viewer. So the only change that we need to do here is we need to get rid of this code. 
and then we need to create a database table so obviously let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio so first let's create a table that can law, uh, store the exception information and this table is going to contain three columns the ID and if you look at the ID it's an integer column and it's going to be the primary key and it's an identity column again if you don't know what an identity column is we, we have discussed about creating tables creating identity columns creating stored procedures uh, in the SQL Server video session I'm gonna have that link within the description of this video uh, so that you can refer to SQL Server video series okay so we are creating this ID column and then the date column basically this tells us when the exception has occurred and then the exception message itself and the data type for that is nvac care of max so let's go ahead and create this table execute command completed successfully refresh the tables folder and we should see it there alright so the next step is to actually create a stored procedure that can then be invoked by our dotnet application and pass this exception message to that stored procedure which can then in, uh, add uh, the exception to this table and to do that we need to create the stored procedure so I have the code for that so let me copy the code for that and again this is going to be a very simple stored procedure so if you look at that one what is this stored procedure doing if you look at this table this table has got three columns ID date and exception message ID is an identity column so we don't have to supply a value for that we only need to provide the value for date and exception message columns and if you look at this stored procedure it's exactly doing the same thing insert into TBL log for these two columns the date column and exception message column pass the values for date we don't have to pass a date from the application we can compute that within the stored procedure itself so I'm using this get date I'm invoking this get date method that's going to retrieve the current date and time and then pass that to this date column and exception message is coming in as an input parameter to the stored procedure that's it so let's create the stored procedure now so command complete successfully the stored procedure should have been created now all we have to do is write the ADO.NET code that invokes that stored procedure okay and obviously uh, the SQL connection SQL command classes are present in system.data.sql client namespace so let's import that and then within web.config file we have the connection string okay and if you look at the connection string name it's DB connection string and the connection string itself data sources dot indicating local installation of SQL Server and the database is sample so within SQL Server Management Studio the database name is sample and I'm using integrated security meaning Windows authentication and then the provider is system.data.sql client meaning we are using SQL Server okay so we obviously need to read this connection string from web.config file and to do that we can use configuration manager class that is present in system.configuration namespace so using system.configuration and here we are going to read the connection string first so connection string is equal to we are going to use configuration manager dot connection strings off and we need to specify the connection string property uh, the name of the connection string and then use the connection string property to retrieve the connection string from web.config file the next step is to create the SQL connection object so SQL connection con is equal to new SQL connection and we need to pass in the connection string so I'm, we are going to pass that and then next create the SQL command object so SQL command CMD is equal to new SQL command and to this constructor we need to specify the command text in our case the command text is going to be the stored procedure SP insert log so let me copy the name of that and then the next parameter that we have to specify to the command object is the connection upon which we want to execute this command in this case it's going to be connection object and then the most important thing here is this command is actually a stored procedure so you'll have to tell that to the command object and how do we tell that using command type property so command type is stored procedure and the next thing is we have to create the parameter because this stored procedure actually expects an input parameter and the name of the parameter is at exception message so let's copy that and let's create the parameter and how do we create a parameter using SQL parameter class and we are going to call that parameter is equal to new SQL parameter and the constructor of this class requires two parameters the name of the parameter and the value for it 
the name of the parameter is going to be at exception message and where is the value coming from the value is actually coming from this string builder exception message object so we are going to pass that and since that is a string so let's convert that to string so we have the parameter next we need to associate this parameter to the command object using parameters collection so command dot parameters dot add the parameter object that we have just created and finally open the connection and since this stored procedure is an insert stored procedure we can use command dot execute non query again we have discussed about ADO.NET in detail within the ADO.NET video series again I'll have the link for the ADO.NET video series within the description of this video so if you want to check back ADO.NET video series you can use that link so let me close the connection now that's it we're done so now all we have done here is written some ADO.NET code to take that exception message, pass it to the stored procedure SP insert log, and this SP insert log will add that to this TBL log table. That's it. We have logged the exception to your database table. Let me go ahead and run this at, at, at this point. As you might expect, when the page loads, it tries to read that XML file which is not present. So we get a file not found exception within global.as. AX, we are retrieving that exception, logging to the database, and redirecting the user to this error page, application uh, errors.aspx. You can't see that in the URL because we are using server.transfer. Server.transfer will not update the address in the URL. Okay, so let's go ahead and check if the exception is actually logged in the table. So I'm going to say select star uh, from the table name is TBL log. Look at that, I have the exception object. So let me copy that, open a notepad, and paste it so you can see that. So we have the exception there, HTTP unhandled exception, and there should be a file not found exception as well. OK, so we have seen how to log the exceptions to a database table. Now if you look at this, we are handling exceptions you know, we are logging the exception in global.asx. It turns out that depending on what you are trying to do with, within your application, you may want to handle exceptions where they have occurred and display a meaningful error message to the user, in which case you'll just put a try block and then within the catch block, you can actually log the exception and then display a meaningful error message to the end user instead of redirecting him to the generic error page. For example, maybe if the file is not present, my application requirement is that I want to show the error message to the user on that file itself in the label control. So if you look at this web form one, along with the grid view control, I have a label here, label errors. Now I want to display a message, you know, saying that the file is not present so that the user can put the file at the required location and then try to access that. Okay, uh, if that's the requirement, I can handle the exception within the catch block. So within the catch block, I'm uh, catching the exception, and then I'm checking, okay, if the exception is file not found exception, then what are we doing? We are setting the text of that label errors to countries.xml is not found. Okay, uh, otherwise, if it is any other type of exception, we are actually saying an unknown problem has occurred, please contact the administrator. Now, irrespective of whatever is the exception, let's say I want to log the exception before we display, we can use the logger class, so logger.log, and to this method, all you have to do is pass that exception. So here, we are handling the exception where it has occurred, rather than allowing it to propagate till the application level, and then handling it there at, at that level. So it again depends on your application requirement, what exactly you want to do. Depending on that, you know, you either handle it where it has occurred, or you will allow it to, to propagate till the application level and handle it there. So let me go ahead and run this now. As you might expect now, it wouldn't be redirected to uh, errors.aspx page. Instead, on webform1.aspx, it's going to show that message within that label control. And then now if we go back to the database table, uh, it should have logged that exception again. So I see that file not found exception here. OK. So in this video session, we have seen how to log exceptions to a database table. In the next video session, what we are going to do is we are going to modify this logger class and then uh, in such a way that the user can configure where they want to log the exceptions within web.config file. And depending on that, it will automatically log the exceptions either to the event viewer, to the database table, or to both. It all depends on user configuration. Let's see how to do that customization in the next session of our video. 
On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET, C Sharp, and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.